what is a standard of value? Basically, it's a set of criteria one uses to assess one's efficacy, often coupled with an image or a single concrete form of what or who one wants to be. So using the two questions I just posed as examples, what is the standard of intelligence or attractiveness I use in order to determine whether I'm intelligent or attractive? Now suppose I tell myself that in order to be intelligent, I have to demonstrate mental abilities on a par with Albert Einstein. In other words, Albert Einstein's intellect is the standard to which I hold myself. Or what if I say that in order to be attractive, I need to look like Brad Pitt. Brad, Brad Pitt's attractiveness is the standard by which I judge myself in this case. Now for most people, these standards are completely irrational. In other words, if these are the standards to which I hold myself, how likely is it I'm ever going to be satisfied with my own intelligence or attractiveness? Well, the answer is obviously I'm never going to be satisfied. And in fact, by accepting those standards, I'm really dooming myself to misery. So all the areas of self-evaluation indicated earlier, mind-body relationships, as well as those I didn't mention but nevertheless exist, involve standards of value. The issue in terms of the rationality of one's self-concept is the extent to which the standards one has accepted, consciously or not, are realistic and therefore rational. Now in order to determine if a standard of value related to oneself is rational or not, one has to ask one more question. On what is a standard of value based? That is, standards of value are chosen, although not always consciously. Therefore, what is the basis on which a given standard is chosen? Fundamentally, the standard of value is chosen and defined on the basis of a premise. A premise is a basic idea, a proposition or assertion that is presumed true and used to come to a conclusion. So more specifically, a premise defines the standard against which one evaluates something to come to a conclusion. In terms of a self-concept, a premise sets a standard against which one judges oneself to make a self-evaluation, particularly in terms of one's effectiveness. So let's make this more concrete. And I'll give you an example from my own life. A couple of you have heard this story, so bear with me, um, because you're going to hear it again. Uh, but this had to do with a period at the beginning of graduate school in clinical psychology for me, the first couple of weeks. And I'll give you a little context required to explain the story. As an undergraduate, I didn't perform that well academically. Now, I didn't perform terribly, but I didn't perform up to the standard and level that I knew I could. I didn't live up to my own potential, in my view. Now, there's many reasons for that. Um, the specifics aren't relevant for this talk, but it basically boiled down to I didn't put in the time and effort necessary to perform at the level I knew I could. And that usually happens when you don't put in the time and effort necessary. You don't perform that well. I learned that the hard way. Well, it made me nervous because I wanted to get into graduate school. I knew I wanted to be a psychologist. And there was a lot of competition to get into graduate programs. And my GPA, like I said, it wasn't terrible, but they had certain cutoffs. And I was kind of just pushing up against that cutoff. And so I, I was nervous that I wouldn't get into a program. Well, ultimately I did, and it was a good program, and that was a great relief. But I carried with me some guilt about the fact that I hadn't performed up to the level I knew I was capable of. 
and it created in me a motivation to prove something to myself. I had to prove to myself that I could be as good of a student as I thought I, did, I could, but didn't as an undergraduate. So I began thinking, okay, what makes an outstanding student? What does an outstanding student do to become outstanding? And so there were a bunch of different things that I identified, one aspect of which was my study habits. Here's the premise I came to in regard to my study habits. An outstanding student needs to read every word of every chapter and outlines in handwritten notes each chapter as he reads them. This was the premise I came to. This is what an outstanding student does. Or that's what I thought an outstanding student does in my own mind. So the semester begins. It's my first semester of graduate school. I'm raring to go, happy to be there. Within about three days, I was drastically behind. <laughs> it was terrible. Um, I seriously question whether I should be there. I thought, Adams, you're not as smart as you thought you were. <laughs> and I wondered if, in fact, my performance as an undergraduate was a realistic indication of who I was and my ability. You know, so I'm going through all this thinking, what is wrong here? Why can't I do this? And it was really that question, why can't I do this, that led to a shift in my thinking. And the shift came in this form. I asked myself the question, in order to be an outstanding student, is it really necessary to study in the way that I laid out? In other words, I questioned the premise and the related standard of value that I had accepted. So what was the premise? Again, outstanding students read every word of every chapter and make handwritten outlines of the chapters while they're doing it. That was the premise. What was the standard of value? Well, it's really contained in the premise because it outlines the specific behaviors and criteria against which I judge myself. But I'll confess to you, I had this fictitious image of my, in my mind of some superhero student, some guy who's, you know, he's just, up 20 hours a day, pouring over material, taking it in, learning it, devouring it, loving it, and I'm hating it. And so I'm thinking, that's not me. But it makes the point that with a standard of value, as much as there are behavioral criteria, there's also usually some image, some single concrete form that people use as an example. I want to be like this person in my head. And so what was the resulting self-evaluation? I seriously questioned myself. I didn't know if I had the ability to be there and do what I wanted to do. So this was the progression. I had a premise of what an outstanding student does, which created a standard of value and related behaviors against which I judged myself and made self-evaluations. And from this example, there's a basic formula that emerges for self-concepts. I wish I had a chart or something so you could see this, but I'll demonstrate it this way. Here's the formula. Premise, think of an arrow going this way. Standards of value, another arrow, self-evaluations. That's the formula and that's the progression. The premise sets up the standards as defined in certain behaviors and by an image against which you judge yourself. In my example, I was judging myself against this image of some superhero student, and I was feeling miserable.